Hi and welcome to Inside This Music Box. I'm Erin and I'm a primary and high school music teacher in Sydney, Australia. This video is for any future music teachers out there, people who are interested in possibly studying to be a music teacher. These are the skills I think you need to have ready to go when you enter the classroom so that things can run smoothly. As far as I can find, I'm the only high school music teacher I've been able to find on YouTube. I'm sure there's someone out there somewhere and so if you know about any more please put in the comments I'd love to be able to watch more. Okay on to the first skill. The first skill I think you need is the ability to tune instruments. This is mostly in relation to guitars and ukuleles. In New South Wales it is compulsory for music to be studied in year 7 and 8 in high school. Almost every single school will do a unit on rock music and they will learn guitar. When you walk into your classroom the guitars will sound atrocious and you'll need to tune a lot of them very quickly. You just want to be able to get into it and start teaching them guitar or playing songs. As a result, you learn to develop your relative pitch very quickly. It's not essential that you have perfect pitch as a music teacher. I think a lot of students think that we have it, but the majority of music teachers I know do not have perfect pitch and that's totally okay. This will also probably happen in a room where there are 20, 30 other kids playing guitar while you're trying to tune. When tuning guitars and ukuleles in class, they do not need to be perfect. You don't need to worry about getting them all impeccably in tune unless it's a performance or something because majority-wise the kids will not notice the difference and you probably don't have the time to tune 30 guitars perfectly. The second skill I think you need is to be able to accompany your students on a chordal instrument just with basic chords. This doesn't apply to your students who are doing their 8th grade exams and need an accompanist. You do not need to be able to play very difficult repertoire on piano to accompany your kids. I don't think that's fair and I don't think that's essential for a music teacher to be able to do. At almost every school in Australia they do not have an accompanist on staff which is very normal. We are really fortunate to have one and he is fantastic. While it isn't essential for you to be able to accompany students with difficult repertoire, obviously it is a fantastic skill to have and if you have the time to develop that then I encourage that. However, I don't have the time to learn how to play piano better than I can. I can accompany with chords on guitar or piano or ukulele and that seems to be enough for my kids. The third skill is related to the second and this applies more to high school from my experience in schools in New South Wales. You need to be able to play basic guitar, piano, bass and drums. Ukulele if you have them available. As I said almost every school in New South Wales to my understanding does a unit on rock music and you need to be able to give your students the opportunity to learn all the instruments of a rock band. You may be able to only just play a basic rock beat on drums, you may not be able to take it further than that, but it is really important that you can demonstrate these skills to your kids if you're expecting them to learn it. I've found being able to play drums, just basic drums, I'm not particularly good at drums, I would never say that, uh, but it does end up coming in handy. I had to accompany my students when they were doing a group rock task where they wrote a song together and I accompanied on drums and that was a really easy way to keep them all in time and you can always do things like little fills to help lead them into the next section so they're all on the same page about where they are in the piece. Now while the previous point was directed more towards high school, I think the next skill is more focused towards primary school. I think it's really important for primary school especially if you are able to sing confidently at the drop of a hat. Now while I think you should be teaching your high school kids to sing, the majority wise of high school kids do not want to and it's going to be a struggle to get them to do so. Being a confident singer just means that you need to have pretty decent pitch and you need to be able to demonstrate a confident voice to your students so that they can do the same. Singing is a really really essential skill to have from a young age in primary school and it tends to be the main instrument that you'll use in primary school music. It might be really helpful to just get a couple of singing lessons so you can build up your understanding of how the voice works, how to have good technique and to have some more confidence for when you're in front of your kids. The next skill is more music theory related and that is to be able to transcribe and transpose confidently. As a person who didn't come from a classical music background, I didn't start learning music until I was about 12. Transcription was never a strong skill for me. Because I learned things like guitar and singing, I relied a lot on my oral skills of so just memorization in order to learn repertoire. 
I didn't necessarily have to learn how to perform specific rhythms and so it was a skill I really had to work to develop and I've found since I've been in the classroom that is a skill you use all the time. When you're working on a composition activity with your kids it is so helpful to be able to tell your student what it is they're playing. Depending on the age of your kids you might scaffold a very specific rhythm bank for them to use so that they don't go out there using rhythms that they don't understand. However, some kids might come up with a really interesting rhythm and you don't want to squash their creativity. So you need to be able to figure out that rhythm for them. I don't want to feel like I'm restricting what my students can compose, especially as a composer. I definitely don't want that. So I want my students to have the ability to explore lots of rhythms, whatever comes to them in their head, and then they can learn about how it works and what it looks like on paper. And when it comes to transposing, if you're going to be playing a melody as a class and you've got kids bringing in their instrument, you need to basically be able to transpose it into their instrument for them, unless they're at an older age group where you can take them through that process. The main ones I think are generally the most essential are B flat for your clarinets, your tenor and soprano saxophones, E flat for your alto saxophones and barry saxophones. If you have any kids on French horn, you need to be able to do it to F as well. You really need to be able to just transpose it into the correct key for the kids so that they can participate. I think it's really important that kids get the opportunity to play their instrument in class. I don't want students to feel like they learn an instrument outside of school and it's never actually used in the classroom. So being able to cater towards those instruments is really important. The next skill is technology and that is being able to use a notation software and audio editing software confidently. Being able to use things like Sibelius confidently saves so much time, makes the creation of any sort of worksheets or arrangements so much easier. Especially when you get into the senior years and students are using more and more advanced things in their compositions, they need to be able to figure out how to put that into Sibelius or to Finale. It is really handy to know all of the shortcuts and all of the ways to fix up a score when students tend to leave compositions to the very last minute. With audio editing software, most of the time this means GarageBand and any programs similar to this are such a fantastic resource to use and there's so much you can do with it and so I think it's really important that you have a pretty firm understanding of how to use the software because you'll be using it really quite regularly. The next skill I think is essential for music teachers is basic conducting. I think you need to be able to be confident and clear with your conducting for whatever grade level you teach. This applies more so to people who are taking ensembles and particular ensembles at that. Um, for instance, I don't conduct my rock band um, and I don't conduct my ukulele ensemble even because I play with them. However, having basic skills in conducting is important for just about every other ensemble. Every typical ensemble, whether it be a choir or a wind ensemble or a concert band, whatever it might be, you're probably going to need to be able to conduct well. Obviously this is a skill you develop over time and personally this is something I didn't think uni prepared me for. I only had one subject on conducting and it only gave us very limited opportunities to practice with an ensemble and it was only two types of ensembles. There was a choir that all of our peers would make up and then also a like class ensemble where everyone played their instrument. The best way that I learned to conduct was actually choosing to be the musical director for the musical Guys and Dolls where I had a large ensemble, I had paying audience members and I didn't want to screw it up in front of people. That forced me to practice a lot and I had lots of opportunities with my ensemble to practice my conducting and this really just threw me in the deep end. I was not ready for it when I started but it was the best way to build my skills and my confidence with conducting and now I have no issue with doing it in front of my students. The next one is not going to be a really regular skill but it's going to be one that you might be asked to do and that is to set up basic audio equipment, especially in the public system, it falls on the music teacher for you to set up all of the audio gear. Fortunately, I studied uh, a certificate three of live theater and events when I was in high school, as well as working as a microphone technician for about five years. And so this gave me the skills I needed and it has turned out to be very helpful having a firm understanding of how to set up audio equipment whether it's a concert or a performance or a musical, whatever it is, 
you probably will need the skills to be able to set it up. The last skill is to be able to differentiate like crazy. Differentiation is obviously a very core part of teaching and it's something that most teachers do focus on. However, I've found in a high school music classroom, the array of abilities is huge. <laughs> I had kids in my year seven class this year who had never played an instrument before in their life and were not confident singers either. I had these kids in the same class as those who were about to complete their eighth grade in their instrument, who were confident improvisers who played in a bunch of ensembles, and I had to cater towards their needs every lesson. Not sure if I did this every single lesson, I tried my best. And while you can plan for differentiation, sometimes the assumptions you make about kids' ability levels are not correct. Some kids will move faster than you expect, some will move slower, and so you need to be able to simplify and extend quickly and on the fly so kids don't either get bored or feel like they are not capable of completing the task. Those are all the skills I can think of that I tend to use on a regular basis as a music teacher. For anyone out there who is wanting to become a music teacher or who is thinking about it, just know that it is one of the best jobs in the world. I love going into school every single day. I love getting the opportunity to teach my kids about music and giving them the skills to play music and compose their own. Teaching is so much about confidence and having confidence in your own abilities as a teacher and in this case as a musician. And having these skills under your belt really ensures that you can go in there confidently and handle anything that's thrown at you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more music teaching related content. I tend to post very irregularly because during term I can't even think about anything else apart from teaching. While I'm still on holidays, I'm hoping to record a bunch of videos so I can upload them over term one. So hopefully you'll see some more content coming out soon. And if you have any other ideas for videos you'd like to see me do, please leave it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.